providing fallback values before Golang version 1.22 has been always a struggle, right? It just felt wrong and clunky, especially when you had multiple fallback values. Fortunately for us, a new function has been introduced to address this specific issue. However, it offers many more improvements beside these fallback values, which we are going to explore in this video. Oh, and by the way, if you're new here, my name is Flo, I'm a professional software engineer, and on this channel we do everything related to the software engineering world. So the CMP for short or compare package in Golang has been around for some time, but you might have never used it before. Now this CMP module provides a lot of comparison related functionality that you can use to actually improve and enhance your Golang code. Now if you talk specifically about this dot or function, it is a variadic function, which basically means that it can be called with any trailing arguments in this function. So it's pretty similar to your FMT dot print line function, where you can just pass in a lot of parameters or arguments to this function and then these will be locked. And this basically means that this function is a variadic function. It is also good to know that this OR function in our compare module always returns the first non-zero value in the arguments list. And non-zero really means all the values that are basically nil or null. So nil specifically, empty slices or arrays, empty strings or the integer zero. And then these zero values are basically ignored and the first non-zero value is returned of this or function. Now that we know what the function actually is and what it means, let's quickly look at some examples and use cases here. Now let's just say that we have a highly configurable web server. And by that I mean that we can, for instance, specify the port of our web server through a CLI flag or through an environment variable. And in the end, if there are no values specified in these two functionalities or these two options, then we will just provide a default port. So how can we achieve this so-called fallback value with the cmp.or function? So for that, I will just create two utility functions that we can use to basically mock the values for our CLI and our environment value. Now this is our first function where we basically only return a string and the value here is for now just flag. And then we also have a get port from end file which also returns a string and in here we basically get the environment variable port if it is defined. If it's not defined it just returns an empty string. Alrighty so let's quickly change the port here for our flag to for instance 9090 and then in our main function we will now make use of the or function so in here we will just say port and then we'll make use of the cmp.or function now this or function looks kind of complex but it's really easy to use all we have to do is just specify all the values we want to have in this OR list. And then the OR function basically just returns the first non-zero value. So for instance, if we just say get port from env here as our first argument, then we will define get port from flag. And then in the end, if there's no possible value, so if both functions returns an empty string, for instance, or nil, we will just return 8080. So the last fallback value is in this case always the port 8080. Now obviously it might be better to specify the port here as an integer, because in the end it is an integer. But just for demonstration purposes, we are going to keep this here as a string. So if we try to lock this specific port in our console, what you will actually see is 9090. Now the reason for that is because our get port from flag function returns the non-zero value 9090. So in the end, get port from env is ignored because it is an empty string, because this port specifically in our environment variable does not exist and therefore it returns an empty string. And this 8080 in our OR function is ignored because the non-zero first value is returned from the get port from flag function. So you might ask yourself, what if we just return or just remove this 9090 here and just return an empty string? If we run this again, we get 8080 back. And I think this is pretty clear, right? Because 8080 is the non-zero first value in our or function arguments list here. 
<laughs> and you might ask yourself, okay, but what if I just remove this 8080 and just insert an empty string here as well? If we just test this, we will get an empty string. The reason for that is this OR function always selects the last value in this arguments list whenever there is basically no possible non-zero value in this arguments list. So in this case, it just returned this empty string here. So this was our first use case of having these fallback values. So let's look at another use case where we do have some sort of chat room, for instance, but we not always want that the user has to specify its name. So we can achieve this optional name thing by just using the or function again and then providing a fallback value like anonymous, right? So whenever the user decides to not enter its name, then obviously the name is going to be anonymous. So let's implement this functionality. For that, we are going to create a new function and we're going to name this get username from input, for instance. Now this obviously returns a string and in this function, we are just going to make use of the scanning functionality in Golang. So let's just create a small print statement here. Now in here, it basically asks the user to enter your name um, or press enter, and then anonymous is going to be selected. Now after that, we are going to declare a simple name string, and then we are going to make use of the scan line function here. Now here we are going to define the memory address of name. And what this means is basically that this scan line functionality manipulates the name variable in this case. And whenever the user puts something into the console, so the user enters something into the console, then this scan line functionality saves the value inside of our name variable here. And in the end, we are for instance going to, let's say trim the spaces in the beginning and in the end of our name string here, and we are going to return the result. Okay, that's pretty cool. Let's just make use of this function. So in here, we are going to declare the username, and now we are going to make use of the or functionality again. And in here, we just say get username from input. And if there is basically no value provided by the user, so if there is an empty string as the return value of our get username from input function, we are just going to say that the fallback value and the default name therefore of the user is anonymous. And let's just print the username to the console. Let's just greet the username here. So again, what this function does is just trying to get the username from the console, from the input by the user. And if there is no input provided, so if there is an empty string, it just fallbacks to the anonymous value. So let's quickly test this out. And if we just hit enter here, we're going to get anonymous as the fallback value because get username from input is an empty string. However, if we just say, for instance, my name, we get the correct read functionality here, which is pretty cool, I think. Now, sorting is another really cool use case for the OR function. And in combination with the OR function, I'm also going to explain the combine function of the compare module. So let's quickly look at this use case. So let's just say that we have, for instance, a struct of employees. And let's just specify the fields name and age. And then we have a slice, for instance, of employee. Now, after that definition of our lovely slice, we're just going to print the employees before sorting. And then we are also going to print our employees after sorting. And instead of using employees here directly, we just say sort employees and use employees as the first argument for this function. Now, let's just quickly declare this function. And in here, we are going to return a new slice of employees. So we're not going to directly sort the employees in place. So in the slice directly, we're just going to copy the slice and then return a new one. So let's just say sorted employees. And in here we say employees. And then in the end, we are going to return the sorted employees. Now for the main kind of business logic, we are going to make use of the sort functionality of the sort func functionality in this case in the slices module. Now this looks kind of funky, right? But let's just remove this definition here. All it takes in is just the original slice. So in this case, sorted employees 
and then it also has a custom comparison function. So let's just say func, and then in here it takes in two parameters, which is A and B, and both of these parameters are of type employee. And in the end, it returns an integer. Let's just say return, and then we say cmp.or. And then let's just say cmp.compare, and in this compare function, we basically kind of now compare two values. So in this case, we say a.h and b.h, and then let's just make another one and say a.name and b.name. Now this looks sort of weird, so let's quickly break this functionality down here. Now in the end, cmp.or is going to return an integer due to the fact that all of the compare return values also return an integer. So for instance, if we look at the definition of the compare function here, you can actually see that it returns minus one if x is less than y and so on and so forth. So this minus one, zero and plus one provides a really basic comparison functionality for our sorting. And this is really important to understand here. And now what we are trying to achieve here is that this all functionality just selects, like I said before, the non-zero first value. Which, for instance, if the age is not equal, so if age x, so if the a age is less than the b age, then it's going to return minus one or plus one, for instance, if it's the other case. Now, if it's equal, so if there is a tie, we might, for instance, sort by another value. And that's what we are going to achieve here by just declaring this other compare function. So let's just quickly look at the output, what this actually does. So what we got here is first the sorting by age. So we have Alex, John, who are both basically 25, and then we have Jane and Doe. Now this kind of makes sense, right? Because we want to sort alphabetically but we always want to have the youngest employee first. And by having this or functionality, we, like I said before, just compare the age values first. In this case, for instance, we compare Alex and Jane, and then we notice, okay, Alex is younger, so we will prioritize this one. And then we have like a tie where Alex and John are compared and both are of the age 25. And that's why this or function then jumps to the other compare functionality. And because Alex, so the character A comes before J, Alex is going to be the first one. Now, hopefully you fully understand this use case. I know it can be quite complex, but if you go deep into this specific example, things just make sense. Oh, and by the way, if you're curious about truly understanding what structs are and what really the purpose is here in Golang, then I highly recommend watching this video here. Thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day and bye bye.